Okay, so it's 3.49 in the morning and I'm playing through the first, set up Kingdom Death, playing through the first scenario and pretty much the, the first thing I've done is punch a lion's dick off. Here's our Kingdom Death review. Oh God. But first, a disclaimer. We don't usually review, it's quite cold. Uh, we don't usually review Kickstarter games on Shut Up and Sit Down because that would be like closing the barn door after the horse has bolted. Uh, bolted and bolted across the border and bolted to its foreign horse wife and applied for horse asylum and had horse children and fathered a horse legacy that uh, lasted for horse generations until it was discovered 10 centuries later by horse archaeologists. It's pointless. The thing is, because Kickstarter's all about prepaying and fulfillment, we'd be reviewing games that either uh, you already own or you now can't buy. A lot of the time, the people who get hold of us and say, can you do this Kickstarter thing, are often the people who just already own it anyway, so we'd just be making videos to satisfy... I don't... It doesn't matter. The thing is, right, we have an excuse for why we're doing this. Kingdom Death is now back on Kickstarter, so it is actually a game that you can buy uh, the window's still open to, to make pledges, and it's good because we sort of wanted an excuse to talk about it. It's notorious. We had to feature it in some way sooner or later. So now, hooray, that's, that's our excuse to, to cover that. Special thanks to Nick Stitchcom and Kieran Hall. I hope I'm, I think I'm saying those names right, for letting us borrow copies because yeah, otherwise, we'd, how would we get one? We wouldn't. They're, they're not anywhere. Uh, but without those guys, we'd not actually be able to bring you this very special winter report and this video would not exist thank you guys it's really cold uh it's a bad idea doing this out here bye huh. kingdom death is a grand campaign of horror fantasy set in a strange and immensely unpleasant world where the only things that aren't trying to kill you are just trying to upset you you control a ragged band of survivors as they try and make their way through this weird and, and a so unpleasant landscape between fighting bizarre creatures, they're scavenging shin bones and, and strange salves and sopping skins to put over whatever terrible cheap equipment they can to try and face the next challenge over and over again. But you're not just developing more gear for them, you're also developing their culture. And with a little bit of luck, after probably several campaign attempts and a fair application of skill and some good die rolls, you may well get to the end of this epic, epic campaign and have some understanding of what the hell's going on in this world. Fighting monsters, which I'm currently doing a terrible, terrible job of here, is the most complex and elaborate part of the game with all sorts of decks of cards to describe equipment and tactics and behaviours, not least because the monsters themselves have a kind of a, an AI deck. They're not played by other players. You draw cards that constantly determine constantly determine how they react to you, how they react to what you've just done. Even, even when you strike them, they respond often reflexively when they're injured. On the other side of the game, the campaign side of things, while not as complicated, is huge, it's epic. It's probably the largest campaign in any board game we've ever tried. It's, think of something that's really big, right? Think of that. No, 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 something bigger than that. Right, double that. Now think of like a whole shelf of those. It's that large. We're not bungee jumping into that campaign abyss just yet though. Let's first talk about good old combat, which is gonna make up about 70% of your Kingdom Death experience anyway. Now, up to four players will control four hunters from your settlement, and right away we recommend probably not always having four players because the body count in this game is so high that inevitably somebody is going to die and then they're going to be left stood waiting for whatever hell beast you're fighting to get killed like they're waiting for some freaky bus. You put your team together and you kit them out with equipment that's inevitably things that you've bashed off the last thing that you kill combined with strange items that you've sifted out of a lake of bile and you move and attack and you attack and move around this thing, taking turns to negotiate how you are doing this, working out the most efficient ways to take this horrible creature down 
or occasionally you may not actually uh, attack at all. You might use your, forego your attack to use some strange piece of equipment instead, like playing a harp made of sinew or uh, biting the head off some curious beetle to give yourself a combat bonus. You are on, by the way, you are on a fast train to Weird Town the whole time that you play Kingdom Death. If you've played miniatures based games like Imperial Assault or Descent, then you'll feel a familiarity here as you sit down with your, your colleagues, your friends, your team members, and you discuss how we're going to use our powers, how are we going to combine forces, how are we going to solve this horrible problem of battle. But games like Imperial Assault and Descent, you know, they are very precisely crafted boards, layouts with walls, furniture, terrain features. In Kingdom Death, your terrain is this black, open, golf course of almost nothing that's occasionally freckled by one or two features but mostly the terrain that you're navigating is this or 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 this or this or or this or this and it's deadly terrain indeed because every time you fight a new thing in kingdom death you have no idea what it does, you have no preparation, or even, or even how it does it. And there is nothing to stop your latest, newest, most deadliest opponent from goring your star survivor and scattering her organs across the board like so many socks on a teenager's bedroom floor. What the hell even is this creature? What does it do? What's, what's this? Well, gradually as you fight these guys, you will draw cards that show every time you hit them what their reflexes are, what their responses are. When they move, you will draw new AI card, new AI card, new AI cards from the deck that will display uh, at least some clue as to their nature, their, their general behavior. And as time passes, as you face these, you learn, you build up a picture of their behaviors like some demented, aggressive naturalist you are watching and you are learning. Whatever humanity is left behind the stony eyes of your survivors, it's engaged in constantly adapting, absorbing all this new information and learning how to fight better, how to survive better. Inevitably, next time, you're tempted to hunt a larger, more powerful version. One that will bring greater rewards, but will also include a few new cards in its AI deck. There's always room for more surprises. Look, I don't want to spoil what happens in Kingdom Death, or very little of it anyway, because what is part of the game is, is discovery. It's horrible discovery all the time. But I'll give you some little examples. For example, you're going to fight white lions a couple of times early on. Everybody does. And uh, at some point in your first or second fight, you might discover that it can send you and your friends flying. And you, maybe you didn't know that before. Maybe that, that never happened before. It's great. You know now. You're, you're sort of forewarned for, for next time. And then you find the screaming antelope, completely new, totally different thing. Why is it screaming? Don't know, best left unsolved. Anyway, you get in there, you start hitting the thing and it just swallows one of your uh, survivors up using the huge belly in its mouth. And you draw a card and it has very specific rules for, for what happens when you're swallowed. It says you are masticated. You are masticated. And there's no way, there's, there's no board game in the world that prepares you for being masticated. And that's Kingdom Death in a nutshell. And there's a rule for that, by the way. There is a rule for just about everything that happens in Kingdom Death. A, a rule in the book or some sort of new card from the box or, or a token that you apply, that you stick down somewhere. Many of them are very, very simple. They're stat modifiers, their new conditions, their slight alterations to behavior or the, a piece of equipment that does something that's, that's never been done before. But I'm gonna come back to all those in a moment. There's, there's a lot of them. What you're probably still wondering at this point is how do I prepare to get masticated? And the answer is that you don't. You don't prepare for any of these things that suddenly happen that you never saw before. Kingdom death is unfair. I, I mean, look, look at this, look, look at, uh, at that, look at that manual. That's, that's not fair. This is a game built of unfairness, but that's okay because Kingdom Death, the knowledge in there that behind every die roll around every, every corner or page turning is some new horrible way to be completely defeated. 
That makes it excellently tense. But though I've gone into some fights terribly underprepared, not knowing that some strange creature can, can crush or traumatize or deafen my poor survivors, I've gone into others completely overprepared through a combination of cautious tactics and really good equipment and, and having all the right knowledge. I've taken down beasts without really very much trouble at all. And you would think that's good, but it's not because it's actually been a really inefficient use of what the game calls lantern years. Another lantern year goes by and then I'm one step, ah, the events. I should talk about how those events are always coming. Settlements, uh, culture, events, development, the, the other side of the coin. This is where my people live in Kingdom Death right now, in this wonderful cardboard kingdom. I'll be honest with you, it's crap. They are eking out an existence from the, the scraping what they can out of the ground around them. This isn't the best settlement I've ever put together. So what I'm going to show you though, because it's the most sort of spoiler free, it's not going to give away too many surprises. Currently got an organ grinder who's sort of turning brains and hearts into mush and paste and lucky charms for people to wear, one of which I found out was actually useless. Um, a bonesmith who's making crappy bone weapons which break when you use them. Leather work makes leather armor. I've even got a catarium, ca catarium, catar which makes things uh, exclusively out of dead cats. So there's an industry for that in Kingdom Death. Also got a culture developing here which is based around a rudimentary language and some weird sort of freaky painting ideas that they use to express themselves. Every turn people come back to this settlement, they collect their resources together from what they've hunted and maybe they have a chance to research, find some new innovation, could be a new principle or a new invention that makes them more cultured, more capable. And they also draw random events. New random events happen all the time. There could be lights in the sky, strange noises in the distance or what I've just seen here, which is much worse than both of those things. How do you prepare for these? Same way you prepare for everything, every horrible event in Kingdom Death, which is you sort of don't, they just happen to you. Draw cards and frequently roll some dice and consult charts and there's, there's a lot of randomness. Unless you really wanted to inventory all of Kingdom Death before you started playing, which in itself is going to be uh, a, a weekend's work perhaps. Um, you, you're facing the randomness, flying by the seat of your pants. Look at some of these folks' pants, it's pretty much all they have to, the, to their name anyway. And everything that happens, pretty much everything that happens isn't nice. So maybe you have a really, uh, you have a really good year and everybody gets home alive uh, and you celebrate. Maybe you have a baby, that's wonderful. Maybe you have a, re a really bad year and nobody makes it home. And then you have to cobble together uh, what equipment you can, what, what spare resources to try and make a new kit for inexperienced survivors to go out and try and fight with, which is debilitating. Maybe this year is a special nemesis year where you have a nemesis encounter. You see, Kingdom Death has a sort of advent calendar of horrible events that are going to happen at certain times and you can guarantee whenever you open one of those doors it's going to vomit some sort of unpleasantness right into your face and eyes. Have a bad time all the time, that's its philosophy. Even hunting a monster, which is the process whereby you try to get to a monster before you fight it unless it's one of the monsters that just comes to find you, that, that also happens. Even this process is fraught with danger. It has you drawing more cards with more events on and frequently, frequently rolling uh, on a chart of a hundred different possibilities, which could be anything from uh, the sudden arrival of a horrible bone storm to just one of your survivors getting blown up. It's impossible to get attached. You, you cannot get attached to any of these poor sorry souls that you're shepherding through this existence. It will emotionally destroy you. But even beyond that, don't even worry about that. Forget about the human scale of the tragedy here. The real danger is the failure of your campaign. Unlike every other campaign-based board game that we've ever looked at on Sharp and Sit Down, Kingdom Death is a toy box that absolutely can and will repeatedly pry some or all of its toys out of your hands 
any way possible, daily, every session, every 10 minutes. The campaign isn't just, it's not just about maybe 60, 80, 100 hours of play through a campaign. It's also about failure and having to return to the start over and over again. A really important thing that you have to consider before you put down hundreds of dollars to play this game is not just the cost, the material cost, but it's the cost of your time and all the other things that you don't play, all the energy that, that you lose as you once again reset, you start all over again because you've got to a point either where you have completely lost or you ain't coming back because you see some of those losses coming, especially after like two or three campaigns. The cost is, is the games that you're not going to play because once again you are going back and you're repeatedly fighting that open first session fucking white lion all over again, tearing the same fistfuls of fur out of its same body. But you know what? If this is a game that demands that sort of devotion and dedication, it at least finds, constantly find ways, finds ways to reward it. Uh, the, the, how I opened this video, the, the fight with the lion where I punched its uh, testicles off, th that really happened. I was actually filming a, a solo fight. Sadly, didn't get to share that story with anybody until now. You've seen it. You're the first. No one else watching, just you. The game just produces moments like that all of the time in a way that a game that is constantly burping up random events can't help but do. It cannot help but create all kinds of bizarre combinations, situations that are funny and unexpected and stories that you really want to share with other people all of the time. It's always doing this. I have, I've seen my favorite character um, permanently deafened by complete accident. He's now insane by the way. And he also uh, recently decided that he would eat a bunch of spiders that fell out of the sky. Why is that? I don't know, he just did. I have seen uh, what should be a pretty standard regular hunt turn fatal thanks to a horrible, horrible, tiny miscalculation. You end up with a list of dead survivors, which is like a list of dead rock drummers, where, you know, once you had someone who had all their, their hopes and their dreams and all the equipment and stats you'd invested in them, just turned into a tiny green globule by the roll of a die or more of a green stain, just wiped out immediately. As I'm sure you've also probably noticed by now, Kingdom Death has a particular aesthetic and it fits into a subgenre that's probably best described as tits and death. Life is so hard, so harsh, that nobody has time to just put some clothes on or find a, a decent bra as they deal with the many problems that are thrown at them. Oh, existence is, is so awful. I d just, uh, I'm eternally naked. At the same time, amongst all this uh, nudity and horribleness, uh, there's often some weirdly comic art in the manual and just strangely funny things happening. I mean, I didn't consciously try to punch the testicles off of one of the things I was fighting. That was what the game told me was happening. I didn't make that choice. And you end up with this weird marriage of the, the occasionally uh, odd, but not that funny, really, a lot of the time, and the, the grimly, grimly horrible. And it's like everything's turned up to 11, and you're not really sure what notes are supposed to be standing out. There are inevitably people who are gonna say, what's wrong with being sexy? And the answer to that, obviously, is nothing. I mean, Quinn's is evidence enough of that. But Kingdom Death is not sexy. It's sleazy. It's opportunistic. It takes every opportunity it can to attach another back-breaking pair of breasts to uh, a woman or show someone else's clothing falling off to the point where it just becomes really trite after a while. It's not even reaching for the lowest hanging fruit so much as just greedily groping at it or, or at anything that it can grope at. And this extends to the miniatures as well, which are sometimes wonderfully revolting in their design and other times just sort of ridiculously revealing. It feels like, you know, you have that weird cousin who's like, you're a survival of the fittest man. And you know, you gotta take what you can and nature's harsh and be powerful. It feels like something that he would have under his bed with some of his soft porn magazines. But those miniatures though, I should talk about that because that leads into it's totemistic, okay? It's, it's, 
not only a reflection of the, the excessive theme of the game, but the excess of the game itself. And I mean the prestige value. Kingdom Death Now is like $250 on Kickstarter plus shipping for the, the, the expansion that you can get, and then about $500 for all the extras as well, if you want to get all the extras on top of the expanded uh, new 1.5 edition. That's a lot of money. It's one of the most expensive board games that you can get. And there's a reason for that. I mean, those miniatures are really good quality. There are also hundreds of cards within the game. It's true, there are hundreds of tokens. And if you play the campaign just, just once, you probably have days, weeks worth of play in there and you, you can't play the campaign once. You know, you'll try and go through multiple times, you try different things. There's, there's a lot of value in there. You're paying a lot of money because, oh boy, fair is fair, you get a lot of stuff. But should you buy it? I have been doing a lot of paperwork. So, remember how I said earlier on, there were uh, all the stat changes, all the modifiers constantly happening. So, in every game that we've played, that, uh, that is constantly going on. Every game that we've played, we have inevitably missed at least one rule. We've forgotten about one stat modifier or one specific thing that a specific piece of equipment can do or one monster behavior or one one modification to what usually happens and it's fine we, we've mostly kept going there's not really been any any serious uh, speed bumps but we've done this every session i am now i think fairly au fait with kingdom death and by the way i have been playing this constantly since i got it and i feel like i can just about tread water but i am still repeatedly going back and forth between the manual and the box to check certain conditions, uh, certain behaviours, certain uh, specific things that I may have only encountered once before a long time ago and then forgot about. It's a lot of back and forth. And let me show you a thing. Here is, here is the standard deck of hunt events that you lay out as part of a hunt track when you hunt a creature. This is what the cards say. All the cards are the same. The cards say, roll on the random events table. Why would you have an entire deck of cards that all produce the same result? That's like having a one-sided die. And why, do, why even not just forgo them completely and just have printed on the board, go to the random events, or just have the rule in the book? There's a lot of... There are things in here that don't make any sense. Why do I write some things down but then keep some information in my head using cards and then some of the other information using tokens. Remember how five years ago, we looked at the, the I'm going nuts here, I'm sorry. We looked at the campaign in Descent and we had wonderful little boxes where you put all your cards and your tokens and your information about your character in the box. And it was all kept in one place and it was quite neat and efficient. Okay, that's a less complex game, but think also about Dungeons and Dragons where inevitably you gather lots of information on your character sheet, you scribble down how a spell works, what a bit of equipment does, you modify your stats all in one place and maybe you note down page references so you can look up a specific rule. Everything in Kingdom Death is everywhere all the time and it doesn't need to be. It's not so much like straddling two stools in its leather skull emblazoned rock pants as just repeatedly falling over between them. It's like prog rock excess that has, like prog rock excess, kind of let itself go a bit. And you know what? This bureaucracy needs some corruption. Before you're fighting uh, a new unknown boss, you might want to look up uh, some of it, some some of its cards uh, beforehand to see what it does, or you might want to um, you check its wound deck to see how it responds to you when you hit it, because you may no longer be willing to uh, basically have a whole campaign bomb because of a couple more unlucky die rolls or card draws before you cross another river of poop. You might end up actually looking at the results table for a few moments and discussing with your friends about whether this is really something you want to do. But how far do you go with that? Where, where do you sit on this spectrum where at one end you are stumbling around like lost lambs or anything can happen to you and at the other end you're looking at the possible consequences of everything like uh, soulless robots? The thing is, 
The other thing is, the start of the campaign is not that great. It's not that exciting. Once you've seen a bunch of things in Kingdom Death and then had to go back and play through them again, it's nowhere near as interesting. Doing that two, three, four times, I can't deny that Kingdom Death uh, innovates as much as it intimidates. It, I'm trying to put things away. I can't remember where everything goes. It is uh, as grand a vision as it is grotesque a vision. And speaking of grotesques, you know you have those um, gargoyles on churches. Some people are terrified of them and think that they look incredibly creepy. And then other people look at those and find them oddly beautiful and even reassuring. That's how people are going to feel about Kingdom Death. There are going to be people so divided. People who want to climb into this box and live in it and will feel snug and comfortable in, in the huge complicated world it creates. And there are going to be other people who bounce off it so hard that they have to go to hospital because they have concussion. This is, this right here, is the period in time where board gaming entered the prog rock or the psychedelic rock era. And like so much music of that particular genre and time, it is excessive. It is extraordinary. It is embellished for the sake of embellishment. This is overblown. It is overproduced. It is overdesigned. And like so much rock excess, this isn't tight. It's warbling and wandering. It's a grand vision that's forgot to ground itself. Kingdom Death is not the, the wonderful melodies of Bohemian Rhapsody or the, the energy of Stairway to Heaven. It's something else. It's like one of your uncle's uh, strange gatefold LPs, you know, the ones with the space vistas and the fairies on and all the fairies were naked. That would be odd, weren't they? And you tried to listen to those, you couldn't really get into them. Uh, there was some good ideas in there and it was 25 minutes long. That's Kingdom Death. It wasn't just, it just wasn't quite your thing, was it? It wasn't quite good enough. It wasn't, or was it? Was it actually for you? Were you that person? Was it exactly your thing? Was it crazy and mad and overblown enough that you really, yes, you did want to climb into the box and, and live inside it and never leave? There is a fine line between genius and insanity, a fine line between stupid and clever, and Kingdom Death's box is big enough that it straddles that line. It straddles time zones. I mean, look at this thing. How much more black could a box be? And the answer is none. None more black. Kingdom Death is Iron Butterflies in a Gada Davida. Do you know that song? It's 17 minutes long, it's repetitive, it's stolid, and it has everything in just for the hell of having everything in. So we can't recommend Kingdom Death in the same way that we can't actually stop you from buying it, from throwing your money at it if you really want tits and death and rock and roll on this sort of scale. If you do, an Englishman on the internet telling you that it's, it's sloppy and inefficient and it's frequently sexist, that's not going to put you off. You're going to hear the things that you want to hear. You're going to hear how it's full of so much, how it actually is really pretty good value for money, how it relies on random events to generate drama, but so much drama, how it does have really excellent miniatures, how it will uh, punish you in a way that perhaps you're really, really excited about. I don't know. Kingdom Death is not great, but it's frequently good. And it does produce so many moments of shock and wonder and excitement and delight. So there you go. That's our complex and sort of messy conclusion. I've had fun with Kingdom Death and I'm gonna go back and just play a little bit more. There's a few things I still yet haven't seen. There's a couple of things I wanna try and I'll either play through a scenario or just sort of cheat and look at some cards maybe doesn't matter i'm gonna have some good memories some really interesting things happen but oh my god never before in the history of board games did punching the balls off a lion produce so much paperwork <laughs>